Good afternoon and welcome to our fall break edition of Lariat TV News Today. I'm Grace Smith. And I'm Igor Stepchinsky. Thanks for joining us today. Baylor lights are all among us, but one in particular has left a lasting mark on the Baylor community. LTVN's Kennedy Dendy found out what the legacy of Mark Hurd means to Baylor University. Mark was someone that loved Baylor, that was always challenging the university to uh, higher levels, to be exceptional in everything that the institution does and is about. Baylor is a place where lights shine bright, but it takes a true leader to keep their light shining beyond. On Friday, it was confirmed that Mark Hurd, the vice chair of Baylor's Board of Regents, has passed at the age of 62. Mark and his wife Paula are co-chairs of Baylor's Give Light campaign and donated one of the largest gifts in Baylor history, the Mark and Paula Hurd Welcome Center. They are also recognized for their role in Baylor's naming of the Hurd Tennis Center. Baylor alumna Jimmy Bendek shares about the impact Hurd had on the tennis program. Uh, Mark has been kind of a cornerstone for uh, Baylor tennis and, and just Baylor in general. Um, obviously, I've got to know him, and he's he's he changed our lives as tennis players. He made our experience, our student athlete experience, really really positive. His his legacy uh, as a one of the finest board members in terms of his his service will will live on forever. And his legacy will not be forgotten by the university community and life he leaves behind. Reporting for Larry at TV News, I'm Kennedy Dendy. Many Baylor students were concerned this week after a band of severe storms ripped through North Texas Sunday night, producing as many as nine tornadoes. The strongest of those was classified as an EF3 twister. Students from the Metroplex were checking in on their families after the storms reaching wind speeds up to 140 miles per hour, left a path of destruction as they ravaged through North Dallas and Richardson. The city of Dallas is currently assessing the property damage the storms left behind, but amazingly, there were no reported deaths or severe injuries in Dallas area. However, other states that the storms ripped through were not as fortunate, as there were at least four reported deaths in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Science can be just as fun as it is fascinating, and that's what one Baylor student wants Waco kids to remember. I have the details that takes us beyond the science classroom and into the Sikkim for Science Fair. On Saturday, the Mayborn Museum Complex hosted a Sikkim for Science Fair, where children from all over the Waco community can get hands-on experience with science. Children took advantage from the physics, chemistry, environmental science, and biology exhibits. Kaylee Reisenauer, a fourth-year PhD candidate at Baylor University, hopes this will jumpstart children into being inspired for a potential career in science. You know, the whole stereotype of the Einstein-like character is just so overworked, and I don't think a lot of kids need that, A, and, but it's the only thing that they're seeing a lot of times. And I'm not in a lab coat, like I'm just hanging out talking to you about some science and making it really cool and engaging. Kaylee is especially passionate about this because before she was a breast cancer cell researcher, she was just another little kid inspired in the science classroom. So I think I can track back my love of science to my seventh grade science class. Uh, we did Punnett squares, which are those four by four gene crosses. And I remember going up to my teacher and being like, can I have more? I really like this. For Lariat TV News, I'm Igor Stepchinsky. Fall is here, along with a load of exams and university events. Despite all the hustle and bustle, Baylor students make an effort to remain politically updated. Baylor's branch of the Network for the Enlightened Women watched the recent 2020 Democratic presidential debate while painting pumpkins and promoting female political activism. The organization is a like-minded community of conservative women that hosts bi-weekly meetings from 7 to 8 on Mondays in Cashin. The Baylor Democrats will be hosting a spooky politics night on October 28th at 6 p.m. to support and promote the ideas of democratic youth. 5% of undergraduate students are raising children, according to Baylor's recent child care needs assessment. Our very own LTVN's Brinshavia Jordan is one of them, and she caught up with one student who shared her journey of parenthood while pursuing a nursing degree at Baylor. While balancing being a mother and student can be challenging, it's not impossible. I know because I'm one of them. I had a visit with one student who shared her journey in hopes other mothers will be inspired to know it's never too late. About 700 Baylor undergraduate students have dependent children at home. 
I've been working towards this for a very long time. So just, I just want to give them some type of inspiration and be a good example for them. With a support system and determination, a college degree is definitely attainable. I want them to understand what it means to be resilient. That's one of the things, because there's been plenty of times I really felt like, hey, I can't do this. This is too much. The workload is too heavy. I'm a mom, I'm a wife. But then I, come, I bounce back into that realization, hey, I am a mom and I am a wife. I am strong. I do have God on my side and I can do this. Baylor offers resources for nursing moms at six lactation rooms on campus. After a proposal to the president to raise awareness of child care needs, Baylor hopes to partner with the Waco Chamber of Commerce for a solution. You just have to keep at it, like no matter how hard it gets. Baylor also hopes to ignite the SWAT program that was started for students who are parents and provide other necessary resources. For Larry TV News, I'm Bryn Shavia Jordan. Next, we have a story about how the wakeboarding team was able to help the community while still staying in the water. We will also hear one very good reason why one fraternity organized a haunted house experience on our campus. All this and more after the break. The best and brightest are drawn to Baylor, where those from many backgrounds with many talents shine together before casting their light outward to illuminate the world. Through transformational learning opportunities that are grounded in Christian faith and service and research that impacts lives and communities. Baylor University, a place where lights shine bright. A $250,000 prize awaits the winner of the Robert Foster Cherry Award. Endowed by 1929 Baylor graduate Robert Cherry, it honors an outstanding professor who demonstrates teaching expertise in their area of study. The award is given every other year by a committee of 12 Baylor academics. One of the top three finalists is Dr. Jennifer Codnard Black from St. Mary's College of Maryland. She addressed the influence of food literature and ethical eating with an on-campus lecture on Monday. Another collaborative Eastside Market happened this past Sunday, and one of our very own Baylor students had a special booth. Junior Trey Minnell launched his new clothing brand, Solar Apparel, at the end of September and brought the successful line to Eastside Market. This has helped Trey with his goal of not being a brand exclusive on Baylor's campus. He wants Solar Apparel's brand to expand to other campuses and cities. The name Solar comes from the idea that uh, we're called to live as Christians as human solar panels um, and that everything good about us, our talents, our characteristics, our abilities um, is all from God. It's all been going really well, especially here today. I've been able to be with uh, a lot of people and make new relationships and sales are going very well. I'm glad that he's out here. For him to come out and do that, I feel like he's representing Baylor really well, you know. Um, I wish we could get more vendors like that, you know, out here. Um, but I feel like he's, that's a good thing. He's doing a good thing. Trading in their boards for bags, Baylor Wake jumped out of the waters to show that their commitment goes beyond just sports. LTVN's Braden Thomerson was at the Baylor annual Stepping Out event and tells us what this day means to the Baylor Wake team. Not just boards and backflips, but also community. Baylor Wake participated in a river cleanup as part of Stepping Out, a program started in 1985 that outlines Baylor University's commitment to service. As the wakeboarding team, we use this river every single day. Armed with grabbers, bags, and vests, team members took to the water and the river walk to help rid the Brazos of garbage. It really helps us to get the trash out of the river as well as helping Waco community. A community, it seems, that doesn't just include humans. Just goes to show that athletics aren't the only priority for this team. For Larry at TV News, I'm Braden Thomerson. This past Tuesday, the children and grandchildren of Baylor's faculty and staff got the chance to trick or treat throughout the campus resident halls. This is an annual event called Treat Night. I was there and going to unwrap all the sweet details. Trick or treat! Baylor faculty and staff took their kids and grandkids for some early trick or treating, but this time in the Baylor residence halls. My favorite part would have to be being able to be around the kids. Um, it's so great to be a part of a community that gets to really influence even younger people um, from the beginning. These trick-or-treaters showed up to the campus residence halls in their favorite costumes and were greeted with sweet buckets of candy. To have something so family-oriented for uh, faculty and staff, um, to bring our friends to a safe environment and have a lot of different um, 
decorations and even special accommodations for kids with allergies. And I just think it's such a sweet thing that uh, the Baylor students are doing. This is the annual event called Treat Night, and it was so successful that dorms even ran out of candy. Faculty and staff were asked to bring one canned good for a dollar donation for each child they brought. These donations are going to Caritas, a local nonprofit charity organization that provides food, clothing, and more to those in need. For Lariat TV News, I'm Grace Smith. The thrilling season of Halloween has emerged upon us through the rubble, and Baylor's Phi Gamma Delta fraternity celebrated with their three-day-long event called Fiji Fright Night. I take us through this haunted house experience and tell you the secret potion behind this bone-rattling haunted house experience. It's the season of Halloween, and one fraternity is celebrating by bleeding with glee. <laughs> Phi Gamma Delta fraternity hosted its three-day philanthropy event called Fiji Fright Night for the 16th year this past week. Yeah, so everything that we have inside the tent is all of our members do that. Everything in the haunted house, all of our props, all of our makeup, that's all on our guys and our members to build all of that. This event, now considered a classic by Baylor students, is a haunted house style experience consisting of tricks, treats, and screams. You're doing so scary. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to be that good. We almost beat ourselves. I recommend it. Uh, Honestly, like, <laughs> seeing people laugh when they scream too, because it's like, it's uh, funny making people scream, but it's also funny making uh, them laugh too. Shackling and chains are decomposing straight from the tomb. Students say the best parts about Halloween are the ghastly costumes. Weather plus yeah. dressing up. Dressing up, yeah. Dressing up. Yeah, the event yeah. and everything. Their makeup's really good. Yeah. But behind all the goosebumps, this event supports those who dress up in uniform all year, defending the country's right to be fearlessly free. We do the uh, USO, the United Service Organization. It benefits the troops coming home from fighting our wars and defending our freedom. A great way to support the troops by celebrating a little spook. Right. It's a good spooky time. That's hey, it, that's if it. You buy, that's if it. you buy a t-shirt, all the money goes to USO. Go. Support the truth, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Awesome. For Lariat TV News, I'm Igor Stepchinsky. Coming off of Fright Night, we hope to scare West Virginia on Halloween as the undefeated Bears get ready to host the Mountaineers. Sports updates with Drake coming up right after this short commercial. Stay tuned. At Baylor, our lights shine while we push our limits and guide the way. At Baylor, our lights shine as we're making connections and making an impression as leaders and as part of something bigger. Baylor's light shines around the world, but it starts in each of us. Baylor, where lights shine bright. Baylor Athletics is hot across the board with multiple teams making a splash nationwide. A prime example is the number one ranked Bear Volleyball team who is in Austin today to compete in the biggest match the country will see this week as they battle fourth ranked Texas. Baylor comes in having been named the top team in the nation for the fourth straight week, while Texas has most notably won seven straight and is tied with the Bears at number one in the conference. But Tara Wolf and company are confident in their ability to take care of business against a Texas team that Baylor has beaten just twice in program history. We are looking forward to winning. Um, we're looking forward to doing something that we've never done before. Um, our coach always says that to do the almost impossible, you have to do almost the impossible. So that's what we're going to do. Yes, it's Texas. Yes, they're uh, high ranked, but we're, we're high ranked too. So it's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to playing them at Texas. And we're just excited to what is to come. You know, it's a fun game. Everybody's looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to this match. Our athletes are looking forward to this match. It's a, uh, it's a great October match. It's going to help both teams in December, I think. Prior to tonight's matchup in the sold-out Gregory Gym on the campus of UT, Baylor swept Texas Tech this past weekend as the Bears continue to demolish the school record for consecutive set wins. I was there to see the Bears clinch their 31st straight set. Baylor Volleyball remains undefeated after a home sweep over Texas Tech. We just felt very confident and always in control of the match. And uh, if you know anything about volleyball, momentum can shift quickly. So I'm not sure if you want to be confident, but just feel like you can, can turn it on. I think it's just another stepping stone in the way to where we want to be at at the end. And um, 
I mean, every match is a national championship match, but that one is in the past now, and so it's just cool. We have Texas next week, and we're ready. The number one Bears were led in part by Marika Vandermark, who finished with nine kills. Marika had a great match. She dug in this week, did really good. Uh, lock and distribute the ball really well on her. I've just felt confidence from the coaches and from my whole team. Um, I felt like I was I was picking the whole team up in my uh, enthusiasm and just like I just wanted wanted to show it out and it was great. Hannah Hannah trusted me, gave me the sets, and they made me all look good. Baylor is now 16 and 0 and has swept each of their last 10 opponents. We're just playing like and the the teams are all so good. Like it really doesn't feel like we're sweeping every every person. Uh, we're really trying to just play our hearts out and just staying engaged in every single game and. We, we're all giving 100%. The match was also highlighted by a rowdy crowd of over 2,000 people in the Farrell Center. It's good. It's something special. It's fun. It, it, it just, you know, it's the difference between forcing tradition and, and seeing tradition come alive and thrive. Baylor's next match is the biggest of their season as they take on number four Texas in Austin tonight. For Lariat TV News, I'm Drake Toll. After a dominant 45-27 victory over the Oklahoma State Cowboys in Stillwater last weekend, the now 14th ranked Bear football team is in the middle of a dream scenario as they head into their final bye week. Sitting at 7-0 and tied atop the Big 12 with Oklahoma, the Bears have proven to be a force in all aspects of the game. They're currently ranked 12th in the nation in sacks per game, 14th in points per game, and 22nd in points allowed per game. Coach Matt Rule has now led Baylor to nine straight victories dating back to last season. Charlie Brewer and company hope to keep their momentum going through the off week as they gear up for a primetime game against West Virginia at McLean Stadium on Halloween night. The Bears soccer team is coming off of a weekend in which they battled through a pair of bitter rivalry games against Texas and TCU, splitting the matches. On Friday, despite a score in the 57th minute by defender Sarah Norman, Baylor dropped a 2-1 decision to Texas in a defensive struggle. Sunday's match was quite a different story as the Bears bounced back with 4-0 drubbing of TCU in Fort Worth. Baylor was led by a pair of goals from Reagan Padgett and one each from Elena Rea and Danielle Hayden. The Bears take their momentum from Sunday's win into a pair of home matches against Texas Tech and Iowa State on Friday and Sunday, respectively. Basketball season is just around the corner with the men's preseason AP poll being released earlier this week. Baylor is ranked 16th and projected by the Big 12 coaches to finish second in the conference behind Kansas. Junior guard Tristan Clark was awarded preseason first team all Big 12 honors and coach Scott Drew is primed to lead the Bears to their fifth sweet 16 of the decade. As for coach Kim Mulkey and the Lady Bears, they're projected to win a 10th straight conference championship and Lauren Cox has been voted preseason Big 12 player of the year. The ladies open their preseason with an exhibition game this Friday at 7 o'clock in the Farrell Center. And that's all I have for sports today. Thanks for watching Lariat TV News. Watch us on YouTube, BaylorLariat.com, or the Waco City Channel. Enjoy your fall break, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day, Baylor Nation.